This presentation is a part of a lecture series on the C++ programming language by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given at the bottom of this slide. In this section of the lecture material, I'm going to give a brief overview of the basic string class template from the standard library. The basic string class template in the standard library provides a means for representing character strings. This particular template is parameterized on the character type, character traits, and storage allocator used to allocate memory for strings. And the declaration for this template is as shown on the slide here. You can see there's three template parameters. The first, denoted by char t here, is the type that's used to represent each individual character in the string. So for example, if you want to have a string that consists of a bunch of chars, then this particular parameter would be specified as char. But you can have character strings with other types as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be char. For example, it could be unsigned char. Traits is a type traits class, which gives pro certain properties of the particular type that's being used to represent characters in the string. The allocator is used for memory allocation, to, in other words, to allocate memory associated with the string data. And string in the standard library, the string class, this is just an abbreviation for basic string with char plugged in as the first template parameter. Again, although there's three template parameters, no, notice that the last two parameters are defaulted. And in a lot of situations, you won't need to provide these because often the defaults are adequate for what you'll want to do. So in what follows, I'm going to give an overview of the basic string template class. And also sort of included in this discussion is also the string class because the string class is basically just an instantiation of the basic string template class. Uh, for more details beyond what I introduce here in terms of an overview, you can refer to the two links that are given at the bottom of this slide. The basic string class template has quite a number of member types which are listed on this slide. I've highlighted the more commonly used member types in Magenta to make them stand out, but I'll go through each of the member types quickly. So the first is the traits type. This is just an alias for the template parameter which specifies the traits for the particular character type that's being used to represent characters for the string. Value type is just the type that's used to represent individual characters in the string, which is essentially one of the template parameters. Allocator type is the one of the, another one of the template parameters which specifies the allocator that's used to do memory allocation for the string. Size type is an unsigned integral type which is used to represent things that are associated with some kind of size measurement. So for example, there's a size member function for the string class that allows you to query how many characters there are in a string. And the return type of this function is size type. Difference type is a signed integral type and it's used in situations where a signed quantity is needed for example, it's used to measure the distance between elements in a string. Reference and const reference are just references and const references to value type, in other words, the individual character type for the string. Pointer and const pointer are pointers that are used by the allocator. Iterator, const iterator, reverse iterator, and const reverse iterator are all random access iterator types. I'll start out with iterator. I mean, iterator basically allows you to access the individual elements in the character string so that you can iterate over them, for example. The iterator type is very closely related to the const iterator type. The only difference between them is that the iterator type can be used to modify the thing to which the iterator refers, whereas the const iterator type, you can't use a const iterator to modify the thing to which the iterator refers. So in this sense, an iterator is sort of like a pointer to something that's not const, in the sense that you, you're allowed to modify the thing that it refers to whereas const iterator is sort of analogous to a pointer to const. In other words, a pointer to something that you aren't allowed to modify. Then we have a reverse iterator and const reverse iterator. These are basically non-const and const versions of a reverse iterator type. And a reverse iterator is basically the same as an iterator, except it iterates over things backwards. So essentially the sense of the increment and decrement operators, in other words, plus plus and minus minus are reverse. So with the reverse iterator, when you use the plus plus operator on it, really secretly what it's doing is minus minus under the covers. In other words, it's, it's going in the opposite direction as what you might expect. And this is, these, these sorts of things are useful. In other words, reverse iterators are useful when you want to iterate over a string backwards, for example. On this slide and the next few slides, I've summarized the member functions for the basic string class. With respect to construction and destruction and assignment, we have uh, constructors, destructors, assignment operator, 
The constructor is overloaded, so there's quite a number of different ways that you can construct a string. The next group of functions I have relate to iterators. And these functions are paired together, begin and end go together, C begin and C end go together, R begin and R end go together, and C R begin and C R end go together. The first two functions here, begin and end, they return iterators that refer to the beginning and end of the string. The beginning of the string is the, essentially the first character in the string, whereas the end is one past the last element. A C begin and C end refer, uh, return const iterators that refer to the beginning and end of the string, string respectively. R begin and R end return reverse iterators that refer to the, the beginning and end of the string respectively. And C R begin and C R end return const reverse iterators that re refer to the beginning and end of the string respectively. Continuing on with the member functions, the next group of member functions relate to the capacity of the string. The first member function called empty just returns a bool to indicate whether or not the string is empty, in other words, whether it has zero characters in it. Size returns the length of the string, in other words, the number of characters in the string. Length is just a synonym for size. Max size returns the maximum number of characters that the string could ever hold. Capacity gets the number of characters of storage space that are currently allocated to the string. And the capacity obviously has to be at least as large as the size because the amount of memory that's allocated for storing characters for the string has to be at least big enough to accommodate the number of characters that are currently in the string. But the capacity can be larger than the size. In other words, you may have more memory allocated than is currently being used. And this is what capacity returns. It returns the actual amount of memory that's allocated. Reserve is used to change the capacity, and shrink to fit is used to force the capacity to be equal to size. In other words, to ensure that you're only using the minimal amount of memory that's required to store the number of characters that are currently being stored in the string. The next group of functions are for element access. The first is the subscripting operator, which is overloaded by this class, and it provides access to individual characters in the string. The subscripting operator doesn't perform any bounds checking, so if you give it an array index which is out of range, then bad things are going to happen in your code. Um, at is basically identical to the subscripting operator, except that the index that's provided to the at member function, bounds checking is performed on it. So basically it gives you a way to access individual elements by subscripting, but with bounds checking enabled. And if the bounds check fails, an exception will be thrown. The front and back member functions return references to the first character and last character in the string. The next group of member functions for the basic string class are modifiers, in other words, operations that allow you to modify in some way the content of a string. The first of these member functions is clear, which just initializes a string to an empty string, in other words, initializes it to a string with zero characters. Assign is used to assign content to a string. Insert is used to insert one or more characters into a string. Pushback is used to append a character to the end of a string. The compound assignment operator plus equals is overloaded to perform string concatenation. It allows you to append one string to the end of another. Uh, the append member function also allows you to append a string to another. Erase allows you to erase characters from a string. Pop back deletes the last character from a string. Replace allows you to replace some subset or some substring within a string with new characters. Uh, resize allows you to change the size of a string, and swap allows you to swap the contents of one string with another. On this slide, we have yet more member functions for the basic string class. So I'll start with the first group of functions at the in the table at the top of the slide. The member function C underscore STR, this stands for C string. This function gets a non-modifiable C string equivalent to whatever data is stored in the string. This is very convenient when you're, you have data that's stored in a string type, but you need to pass the information to something that's expecting a C style string, in other words, a null terminated string. This allows you to perform the conversion necessary to do this. Data obtains a pointer to the first character of a string. Copy is used to copy a sequence of characters from a string to somewhere else. Sub STR stands for substring. This is used to extract a substring from a, from a string. Uh, compare is used to compare two strings to see which comes first in order. The next group of functions are for searching. The functions find and rfind are similar. They both allow you to look for an occurrence of some content inside of a string. For example, you can look for a string inside of another string. The only difference between far, find and rfind, find starts the search looking from the beginning of the string and moving forward towards the end. 
whereas R find starts at the end of the string and moves backwards. So find will find the first occurrence of the thing you're looking for, whereas R find will find the last occurrence. And find first of, what this does, if you provide a sequence of characters, it will find the first character in the string which appears in the sequence of characters that you've provided. Find first not of returns the first character in a string that doesn't match one of the characters in the sequence that you've provided. And then find last of and find last not of are similar to find first of and find first not of. The only difference is the, the functions find last of and find last not of start searching from the end of the string going backwards. Finally, the last group of member functions associated with the basic string class relate to allocators. So there's a member function called get allocator, which simply returns the allocator that performs memory allocation for the string object. At this point, I'd like to mention a few non-member functions that are associated with the string class. And in particular, these functions are for numeric conversion. So for example, you might have a string that you want to convert to a numeric type or vice versa. And the functions that are listed on this slide can be quite useful for this purpose. So for example, if you have a string and you want to convert it to an equivalent int representation, you can use the function s to i. And there's also corresponding functions for converting from a string to various other types, like stol for converting a string to a long, and then this function for converting to long long, this function for converting to unsigned long, this one for converting to unsigned long long, this one for converting to float, this for converting to double, and this function for converting to a long double. There's also functions toString and toWString, which can be used to convert from an integral type or floating point value to a string, or in the case of toWString to a wString, wide string type. On this slide, I have a code example making use of the string class. The first thing you'll notice in the code example is I'm including the header file string. This particular header file has all the declarations and definitions necessary for the using the string class. Then in the main function of this program, the first thing I do is I create a string variable called s. Then I read from the standard input stream into s. If this fails, I clear out the value of s using the clear member function, which just sets the string to be an empty string. On the next line, I print the value of the string s, and I also print the length of the string, in other words, the number of characters in the string. And the way I accomplish this is by using the size member function, which returns the number of characters in the string. On the next line, I create a new string variable called b, and what I'm going to try to do is put into the new variable b the string s but in backwards order. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate over s using a reverse iterator. So I'm using cr begin and cr end here because I want to use a reverse iterator, in particular a const reverse iterator. So each time as I'm iterating, I'm going to be stepping sort of backwards through the characters of the string. And each time through the loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the character that I'm currently looking at, in other words, the character associated with the iterator i, I dereference i, and then I'm going to append this onto the string b. And b is initially empty because it's default constructed, which will create an empty string. So by the time this loop finishes, I'm going to end up with the string b having all the characters from s but in backwards order. So then I print out b, which is going to be the string s but in backwards order. Then on the next line, I'm creating a new string variable called msg, which is equal to hello. Then on the next line, I'm going to append to the string msg using the compound addition operator, the string comma space world exclamation mark. So this will append this string to the end of message, this msg variable, and then I print this out. And then lastly, I'm just illustrating the use of the c underscore str function. What this does is it allows you to get a, a pointer, a constant pointer to char, which corresponds to a c style string representation of the string s in this case. And then I'm just printing out this character pointer which is going to end up printing out my original string s but represented in terms of a null terminated string. On this slide I have a simple code example illustrating the use of some of the numeric conversion functions that I mentioned earlier for the string class. So in this particular code example again we're including the header file string in order to pick up the declarations and definitions necessary for the string class. Then in our main function, we're creating a double variable called x, which is equal to 42.24. And we want to convert this, this double value into a corresponding string representation. So we use the toString function, passing x, and the return value from this function is going to be the numeric value x converted into its, an equivalent string representation. And then we simply print out the value of this string variable here. Then on the next line here, we initialize our string variable to the string 3.14.
And then what we want to do is we want to convert this string into a numeric value, particularly into a double numeric representation. So to do this, we use s to d, which takes a string as, as the parameter, and it returns as its return value a double value representation of that string. So and this is assigned to x, and then we print x.